All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkBook. Um, I don't know what's uh, where the sticker is, so I don't know what the exact model of this laptop is, but uh, it's a Lenovo ThinkBook. This is the first um, ThinkBook I've seen, I believe. So anyways, what you wanna do is um, remove the screws from the bottom. So they are T5s. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. Once you remove those nine screws, you'll want to use a suction cup. If you don't have one of these, maybe you have one somewhere in your car or you have like a GPS suction cup mount or something like that. So you can use that or um, you can also use uh, some tape. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll put two pieces of tape that meet towards the center and then they attach like that so I can use it as a pull tab. So that's another way you can do this. Or if you can get a good pry tool, you can um, try and pry this piece up. So the gap here is pretty thin. So you will need a very thin pry tool, maybe something sharp like this. I sharpen this one and I can kind of get in between. But the safest way is you get a suction cup like this stick it on and just kind of pull this up just like that okay try and hold this little part down i use my fingernail to kind of hold it down but yeah as you can see it just pops up just like that all right so here you can see underneath okay once you get the cover off you can set that aside and then usually as or as usual the first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery if you're going to mess around with components if you're just messing around with the ram and the SSD, you probably don't need to do this, but it's always good to do it just to be safe. Um, so remove the screws for the battery. So these use a PH0 or a J0 screwdriver. Um, this model does use three different size screws for most of the components. I don't know if they use any others, but these are PH0. And then the screws for the hinges are a PH1 or a J1. Okay, so remove the four screws for the battery. All right, this speaker wire is threaded um, through the battery, so just be careful. Um, you might wanna thread this um, wire out. And then once you do that, you can lift this battery up. Okay, and then try and get as close to the cable. I try and use my finger to put pressure and kind of just wiggle this cable side to side. Keep wiggling it. You don't wanna pull too hard and eventually it will come out. So if you can't, um, if you can grab this with your fingernails, this sometimes help. I use my fingernails and just wiggle it like that, okay? So you can see the battery came out. So the battery model number here, let's see, is L18D4PF0, okay? There's also this, I don't know if that's part of the model number, but um, yeah, so if your battery's dead, that's how you would replace it. So here you can see the trackpad cable. So all these cables come out by flipping up this little latch, these little latches, and then you can lift the cable slightly and pull it back. All right, just put it back and then push that down. All right, so all these connectors are using those. Um, you do have the speaker connector, which is like the battery connector. You just use your fingernails and then kind of just keep wiggling the connector and eventually it will pop out. Pull a little bit slightly and just keep wiggling it and it'll eventually pop out. You don't want to pull too hard back because then you can damage the connector okay all right so there you go so we'll put this back in all right you got the keyboard backlight connector here the keyboard cable here the other speaker cable here you got the m.2 uh, pcie nvme ssd here you can put a full-sized one there's the screw hole here for that all right but they do put this half size i think there's like a 40 40 millimeter or 44 millimeter. I forgot how they measure that. Um, and then you got this cable for the fingerprint sensor, which runs up here. You got this um, cable here for the two USB ports that go here. And of course the fingerprint sensor is also connected to the power button. Then you got these two fans. They're held in with these screws here. So there's one, two, three, and one, two, three screws on both on the other fan. All right, they do guide the antenna wires all through them. So if you do need to take the fans out, you'll likely have to um, undo these. All right. Then you got the fan connectors here. Um, the wires are very thin and fragile looking. So you probably don't want to pull on these wires. You want to try and use your fingernail to kind of um, get the 
the edge of the connector here and just wiggle it out. If you can't, grab as close to the connector as you can and just wiggle that the wires and eventually it'll pop out. Okay, so same thing with the other fan connector underneath here. The wireless antennas, like every other um, laptop I work on, you just pry up from the tail, all right? And the antenna will pop out, just pop it up like that. Um, line it back up and then push it straight back down. So to make sure it's lined up, I run my fingernail over it and if it doesn't move around, that means it's good. All right. Um, the stick of RAM is underneath this metal plate. So to get that out, I just use my fingernail right underneath the metal plate and pry it up just like that. All right. And then go all the way around and pry up this side as well. All right. So here's the RAM. So the RAM we got um, is 16, oh wow, this is a 16 gig stick, PC42666V. So there's only one stick of RAM on this whole computer. Um, this one is 16 gigs, okay? Um, and one thing I forgot to mention, if you are gonna, or maybe I did mention it, but um, I might have forgot for this model. If um, you're gonna mess with the LCD cable, you usually want to hold the power button for about 15 seconds after disconnecting the battery. Um, to be safe, you can do this uh, no matter what you're removing from the board. Uh, it's usually a good idea just so you don't accidentally short anything out here. Um, since I have a lot of experience, the risk for that is almost zero. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, if you're going to mess with the, the screen connector there, make sure you did that step. Okay? Anyways, um, so I went over everything here. The CPU and GPU are soldered to the board. And there's a warranty sticker here. I think that they're not allowed to void the warranties in certain states. So um, make sure, check with the manufacturer if you're allowed to take these stickers out if you're going to remove this, unless your warranty is already over. Okay, so as for the charge port, which is what we need to replace on this model, you peel this, um, this sticky part up. All right. And then again, like I was saying, for the hinges, we do need to switch to... Uh, PH1 or a J1. All right, and we'll remove these screws. Make sure you leave the last one uh, empty, the one on the far corner, um, because that's to hold the case in place. All right, so make sure you don't um, put one of the larger hinge screws in there or you can damage the threading. Okay, so I'll remove those four screws. All right. Then to lift the hinge up, what I like to do is open the laptop slightly, all right, and then set it back down. Once you do that, you'll have a gap here, and then you can actually pull the hinge up by hand. Okay, oh, it was getting caught there. All right, so here we go. Then we can access the charge port. All right, and then we can pull this out. So on these... Um, these hinges, they'll often have these little plastic pieces that stick up. So uh, one way to kind of avoid that, like how I had it getting caught there, you want to lift up the screen a bit more. I only lift it a tiny bit, but you can open it like 90 degrees. And then you can, um, when you undo this, you can pull it back and it will pull it away from the hinge. Okay, so we got the charge port here. Alright, so for some reason their laptop's not charging. I'm hoping it's just this charge port. So I'm going to test the voltage and see. Let's see here. So this isn't um, something I usually show in the repairs, but I figure why not. So, Alright, so first thing we'll do is we'll test the voltage of the charger itself. So just grab the charger. All right, we got this. Most computers are within 20 volts, so we will set it to the 20 DC volts. All right, so most of these chargers are below 20 volts, so I'll leave it on that setting. Once you do that, hold the black one to the outside and then touch the red one to the inside. Hmm, is the charger bad? Okay, there we go. So it's hitting 20. So I think this one might have like, um, I don't know if it has a warning cutoff circuit so that it detects that it's not connected to, um, to a computer. So it actually cuts the voltage the moment after. 
So let's try with the other. They brought two chargers. Let's try with the second one. See if it does the same thing. We've got this. Put the black one there. And then touch the red one to this. Alright, so it's doing the same thing. It spikes and then it shuts off. Okay, so now we'll check this. Charge port. So now you can see there's the red and the black wires, so we will just touch the two together. All right, it doesn't matter which one you actually touch to which. Um, the only thing is then the voltage will be a negative instead of positive. So here you see, actually, it's actually showing the voltages here. So 18, 19, I think this is supposed to be a 20 or 19.5 volt. So, it looks like these pins are actually all sending the power, so I'm not too sure why their laptop they said isn't charging. That means it's a motherboard circuit issue. Okay, so we will put the charge port back. It looks like this one's a motherboard issue, so I'm probably not going to be able to fix it. Um, We'll see what happens if I try and plug it in without the without the battery in and see if that does anything different. All right, plug that back in. So like I was saying before, you can avoid um, hitting the plastic piece by opening the screen a bit more and then and then pushing the hinge on top. All right. I don't know if you can actually see this. All right, there we go and then push this down. So that way you don't um, scrape the edge of those black raised plastic bits. Okay, now we'll put these screws back in. Again, these are the PH ones. Okay. So the charge cord looks like it's sending power out. One other thing I can do is check it while it's um, plugged into the board here. Um, that is a bit riskier. Oh, this one last screw here is actually a pH um, zero. No wonder why it was a bit more tricky to remove. Okay. All right, so this one down here is a pH zero or J zero screw. All right, we'll put the RAM cover back on just to be safe. this piece of adhesive back over even though I don't think it's doing anything all right I don't know why they have that there okay so let's see what happens when we plug this in without the battery there are no lights on this are there there there's no charge indicator lights oh yeah there's a charge indicator light but nothing is happening Okay, so let's check the voltage going into the computer. Again, you want to be careful if you're going to do this because the power is live now and you don't want to short something out. So touch the red one to the red one and the black one to the black one. There's no power. Nothing at all. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's showing. Yeah. So power is getting to the board. Okay, so power is going to the board. So that means something internally is actually damaged. The charge port is fine. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but it looks like the motherboard is actually fried. So I don't even know what model this is, so I don't know what the motherboard model is. I don't see any model numbers listed here or anything. Let's see here. Sucks because this looks like a nice kind of expensive laptop, especially since they threw in 16 gigs of RAM. So I don't know what's going on with this thing, but I guess maybe they put too much power on this and it killed itself. So bad design. All right. I don't see anything weird. It didn't even look too dirty inside or anything. Um, nothing else the only other thing I could do is pull the whole board out but 
I didn't ask them if they wanted me to check the whole board and that will be kind of pricey. So we'll probably stop there. Um, let me plug it in without the battery and see if it turns on or anything. Nothing happens at all. Nothing at all. Okay, so looks like this thing's completely dead. Let's put the battery back in and plug it in and see if that changes anything. Alright. Right. Reattach this speaker wire. Or not reattach it, but route it back through this. Okay. And then put these screws back in. Again, remember using the PH0 or J0 screwdriver. Uh, let me see, what's there supposed to be? Yeah, okay. There's one screw up here again. One screw down here. The other screw down here. And the other screw up here. Nothing happens. No lights when you plug it in. Yeah, it's completely dead. Alright, so this one looks like it's a motherboard issue, but anyways, hopefully this video helped you if you had to replace other components. The keyboard is held in place with these melted plastic bits with this metal plate, so if you do want to change the keyboard, um, unless you want to put in all the time to rip these plastic things out, you'd probably be better off replacing the whole, excuse me, the whole palm rest assembly with the keyboard. All right, anyways, so hopefully this video helped you. Um, if it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.